Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. So, um, yes, evening, good evening. Perdón, decía Rosa? Oh, okay. So, um, welcome back. Welcome to a new week and a new lesson. I hope you guys are having an amazing time and you had a nice weekend. Um, so tonight, we are going to be um, getting started on something new. Well, we are going to wrap it up, of course, with the tag questions as we should, because that was part of what we were working last um, Thursday. So tonight we're going to wrap it up with that. And then we're going to move on into reduce relative classes and a little bit of a creativity test. Now, before that, I think tonight I feel in the mood of, um, you know, getting to hear from you guys again. I would like to um, to go ahead and ask you a question tonight. So it's, you know, the usual for Mondays. It's the usual for the beginning of the week. And uh, it's just to check up on you and to get to hear from you a little more. Um, we're going to start hearing from Luis. And in your case, Luis, tell us, how uh, was your weekend? Good evening. Evening. My weekend, my last weekend. Yes. <laughs> it is the same like the remaining weekend, <laughs> but with the difference that we were uh, modify the kitchen. So we 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 change of the of fortuners of, of the kitchen, mm -hmm. and the we. We had a, a big mess <laughs> in that room. <laughs> it's normal, but, you know. When you do remodeling, it's normal to get uh, big messes. That is the more relevant for okay. me at this time. All right. So for you, most weekends are simply like copy and paste, copy and paste? Yes. Yes, I think it, it's the same all the time. Yeah, staying home, maybe uh, go out to drink a coffee to a, a, a shopping center. Or and a fast food, a fast food restaurant. Uh, yes, and that uh, maybe uh, we we never plan uh, any trip. Yeah, we we decide to go to any anywhere, any place in, in the moment. Uh-huh. Right. All right. That's great. Moment. That's we great. decide that. All right. That's, that's all. Right. Already then. Yeah. So uh, the only word that I heard you mentioning, and I think you were trying to say furniture. Hablando de, la, de los muebles de la, de la cocina, I think you were trying to say furniture. I don't remember the word exactly how you said it, but it was a bit different. But yeah, the word is furniture. When we talk about, um, you know, the um, like the woodwork and everything inside the kitchen. But great. And yeah, remodeling always comes with a lot of um, dust and a lot of like movement of things and stuff. So yeah, you need to take some time, you know, to do uh, any sort of like changes in a, in a room. But um, how about in the case of um, Sandra, Cecilia, how about you? How has been your last weekend? Um, well, um, I had a lot. I had a Tired the weekend because my nephew uh, broke his finger. So my mom going to the doctor and I take care of the kids. Oh, okay. So it's a little different. Our sort of bike. Yeah, that's that's pretty sad and it's also very hard, you know, um, getting an injury like in the hands. I, it happens a lot to me because of the kind of work that I like to do, uh, but I never get like serious injuries. It's normally like tiny cuts and, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, getting like serious in injuries like those that you mentioned, it's it's very tough and uh, you have to be careful. Like, you know, you have to pay attention to the things that you're doing. In the case of children, it's maybe our responsibility to watch over them. But yeah, just sometimes you just uh, look away for one second and things happen so it's it's sad but hopefully he'll feel better soon you know and he can recover from that uh but yeah i hope that you know 
the rest for you and and the family around him. You guys get to comfort him and 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 make him feel better as well. But okay, thank you for sharing. Um, how about in the case of uh, Lorena? How has been your last weekend? Wait, um, Saturday I travel. Or I move on, move to Ilovasco. I went to visit my family. I stay with them since since Friday at at night, and and the morning I visit my my aunt, and. Uh, we went to make some something that, that she wanted to do, and I come back in the afternoon because I have some activities at the church, mm -hmm. and then on Sunday I continue working on the platform, on the platform all the morning. Great. And I finish. I almost finished, and I I just like uh, to to write in discussion bus box because nobody likes to to write and then I like it all okay. of them tonight and I have been done doing that and in the afternoon I we went out with my husband oh great very nice and yeah I have noticed that and when I look in I normally only see one comment now one issue is that I cannot necessarily see you know who is the one that has um uh you know that has like added the comment but uh, I see that it is normally just one. I remember that for the first courses that I had, I was almost always telling, you know, the students, like, go ahead and add a comment on the discussion box. But people just never did it. So I basically got tired of it. And I actually started forgetting that there was a discussion box. Now, I see the discussion box thing most of the time when I'm like, you know, watching the videos and stuff. But I just, I don't pay attention to it anymore because it's like, basically no one you know does it as you say but it's great it's great that you take the time you know to practice and to um to leave your comments to leave your your practice so amazing congrats for that all right Thanks. um how about the case of um let's see uh miss garcia how about you how how was your weekend Sorry, I see that your microphone is open, but I cannot hear you. Okay. Uh, no, it seems like it's not working right now. So, no, same thing. Well, sorry, seems like it's not working. Um, maybe later. Maybe we can try. Uh, oh, wait. Hi. Hi. There we go. Okay. <laughs> It was my my microphone. Oh, okay. I think it was for the laptop. All right. Well, I went to the church on Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, and on Sunday I rest all of the morning, and I had a baby shower. I love that kind of of activities because I think that. Um, it is not for the babies. I I love babies, but I know that they even they don't know what is going on, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. But it's like um like a representation of readings for the new parents and for the all effort that they made when when they have the 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 kid. Uh -huh. inside of the mom i mean is is kind of difficult for her and for him to to have the baby um before and after right mm -hmm. and that's all all right great yeah i mean baby showers they are they are quite an experience i have been to a few i know that they're normally you know uh designed for women but i have been to a few baby showers mostly in like the family um, but they're interesting and the sort of activities and things that they, you know, talk about and say and, and do, it's it's great. Yeah, and, we have fun. Yeah. Nowadays, uh also with the with the sex reveal thing, it's also, you know, an add-on um to the to like how fun it can be. Um something that we do in the family is that we normally like uh we love to create names, random names for the future baby. However, we do one that is like real names that we would like the baby to have. And there is another one with like 
made up names, you know, like, uh, I don't know, Kevin Neymar, things like those. Um, so, yeah. But and I have a question for you. Uh -huh. What do you prefer? The, the, um, I don't know how, I don't know how to say it. A girl or a the, boy? The mother or the future oh. mom asks for a, a specific gift or to give her whatever you want. Okay, so you came to the person that doesn't like to give uh, presents. I, I mean, it's not that I don't like to give presents. I love giving things to people. I don't like to give things that I want to give. So I would so much rather to have, like, you know, the people um, tell me what they want. Like, for example, with my, my sisters and my girlfriend, when I give them stuff, it's like I normally um, like tell them, I have this amount of money, pick whatever you want, because I am very bad at like picking for people. Because I'm the same, you know, I feel like whenever I, I get a gift, I prefer to know what I'm going to get because I am very picky. And sometimes I get the stuff and I never wear them. Like my sister, she doesn't understand that, my older sister. And she normally gives me things that I never wear. And it's like, just just learn that, that I don't like, you know, just whatever. I like the things that I like. Um, so I love an activity that people are doing nowadays when they create like a, like a list of like presents that they would like to get. And um, as the guest, you know, you get to pick like, okay, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you that. So that's a great activity, in my opinion, because in that way, um, you're giving the people something that they want or they need. So it's better than simply just going to the supermarket or going whatever store and picking something that you think it's great, but maybe they will not think the same. So yeah, I'm one of those people, you know, for example, um, in the case of my girlfriend, I have only surprised her with her uh, birthday gift twice in the, in all the time that we have, um, you know, knowing one another only twice. Once it was last year, I got her, it was her 25th birthday. So I got her 25 things. Um, but from those, I think that she only knew about two. The rest, the, all, the other 23 things were simply random things that I decided to get her. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, sí, me di la, me di la vida de rico. So, solo fueron cosas del dólar. Antes que van a pensar que fue que le compré 25 cosas caras. No, son cositas del dólar nada más. Así que, yeah. Uh, but I mean, it was, it, it's the first time that I have done something like that. And I don't really like to to buy things for people. So I prefer to um to get or to know what they want. Okay. Um then uh let's move on and let's maybe hear now from Leslie. How about you? How was your weekend? Hello. Hey there. Good night and everyone. And so my weekend was great because I went to my boyfriend's house and we celebrate because he was accepting in a new job. So we ate pizza, a lot of pizza. All right. <laughs> and we watch a series and we listen to music because on Friday uh, we are going to the Seed Arte concert. So excited, so excited I, for that. Last I night. I have to see a teacher. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, it will be great, you know, to um to like uh, get together. Last night I created this, oh, come on, this playlist. I can I, see it. Ah, yeah. And it's Spotify. I know, yeah, I know that it, it does exist already. Uh, but I oh, I have more followers now. Okay, but I <laughs> I created it. Um, my girlfriend told me afterwards, like, hey, there was another one before, but I was like, I don't know. I just wanted to, you know, make my own. Um, so yeah, it's a possible list of songs that he might be performing on Friday, and ah, we, we are it, very excited mm -hmm. as well. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have the set list. Mm -hmm. He played in Mexico. It's so the same, the same that I, I have can here. send you. <laughs> it's basically the same that I have here, I think. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he played uh, Iman, and uh -huh. I hope he played that on Friday because it's my second favorite. My favorite is Tus Pupilas. Oh, okay. In my case, my favorite is um, Me Haces Falta. I don't know. You know, it's, it's yeah, it's one that I love. I also love um Unicos. So those are like the, the two ones that I ah, really yeah. love, love. 
the rest are great. I am listening to them. I am, you know, trying to like learn them by heart. My girlfriend is like, nah, don't worry. You know, like we're going to enjoy it even if we don't know all the songs, but I'm like, I need to, I want to. So yeah, but great. So it will be great. It will be great to, um, to meet at the concert. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's it. So great. Uh, thank you very much for sharing. And we're gonna do one more person, and I think that one is going to be um Carla. How about you, Carla? How was your weekend? Wait, I cannot hear you. There we go. Okay. Yes. Hey there. You listen to me? Yes, I do now. Oh yes, I do. I'm sorry. Okay. Um. Well, I start again. Um. My weekend was fun. I had to. I had my grandma to repair. Or. Uh, or uh, yes, there. Yes. Ah yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I had my grandma to fix a, a her refrigerator. I found someone, a uh, technician, to 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 fix uh, the refrigerator, and everything was easy and not and not was a little expensive. And I don't know on Sunday, maybe I I don't know <laughs> nothing. Okay, <laughs> great. Else? Yeah, that's nice. Well, uh, it's sad that I live too far away because, I mean, I, I am a technician on that as well. I graduated um, two months ago. I think I told you guys that I was taking those classes. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I am, uh, you know, also a technician on that area. But, uh, yeah, some problems are sometimes very easy. However, people are mean, you know, around around the like the business area. People are normally mean and they love to like charge people a lot of money for something that is like relatively easy to solve. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is, but it's great that you got to um, to someone who uh, who wasn't like that and who was, you know, willing to charge what it was due and not what he wanted. So nice. Um, and yeah, great that you got to to help your grandma with that already. So. Now, we were talking about this on uh, Thursday about negative and tag questions. I don't know if I ever got to tell you guys, but tag questions are, you know, the sort of things that you do when you add like one comment at the end of a sentence, an affirmative sentence. It can be, of course, in the either way, negative or positive form. When I say that it's an affirmative sentence, it's because you're pronouncing or telling an affirmation in your opinion and at the end you add this um these few words that we refer to as a tag a tag of course in english is what we will learn or we will um know or recognize as for example the tiny pieces of paper or clothing or or um board where you can see prices and uh, mates of clothing so that's a tag, you know, it's something very tiny. So that's why we refer to this as tag questions because they are add-ons at the end of a question and they basically turn a simple phrase into a question. So that's the work that a tag is going to perform on a tag question, change a simple phrase into a tag question. Okay, uh, now we also got to talk a little bit about some of the examples that I had but now we're going to see how to use them. So we use negative questions or tag questions to offer an opinion and invite someone to react. This is what I was telling you last um, last week, that when you use these sort of questions, what you're trying to do is that you're trying to get an answer from the other person. So it's like an invitation to have a conversation or maybe an invitation to have a debate. Of course, depending on how spicy the topic is, you know, you may go ahead and have a conversation but if it's something that um, is tricky or touchy, it can turn into a debate. But we have the first example. Isn't it weird how some people are always on their cell phones? Like, you know, it's it's um, 
last uh, week, I think it was also, that we had the topic about starting conversations on the bus or starting conversations with people, like conversation starters. So this could be one of those things that you can do, you know, to start getting in touch or, or like starting a conversation with someone using a negative question. However, as I said, negative questions are normally questions that come with an idea that you already conceive or that you already have. So here you're saying, isn't it weird? Yeah. So it's something that you already consider that is weird. But when you say, isn't it, it's like you're inviting the other person to say, yes, it is, or no, it's not. And then continue on um, having the conversation. So yeah, that's something that we need to remember. When we use the negative questions, they are normally about something that we already believe in. Okay, so don't use negative questions with things that you are you do not agree with. You should use them with things that you actually agree with. So isn't it weird how people, how some people are always on their cell phones? So it's like, I will say yes. I think like it's weird, you know, that um there are people who spend hours and hours on the phone and they just don't seem to get tired of it. In my case, for example, during my weekends when I'm resting, I normally have what, like um, an hour maybe to be with my phone. And I just don't feel like, you know, like it's um, healthy. So I just prefer it. I think I have already told you that my yard is relatively big. Like I have a ton of trees um, behind, you know, my house. So I prefer to go hand a hammock there and maybe listen to music or I don't know, maybe... Um, like um not reading because i don't do reading since a long time ago but back in the day i would do that i would do reading now another thing that i do is that i mean if i feel like you know bored i prefer to go visit a friend or maybe go to the soccer field or go to my girlfriend's house but there are people who just don't you know don't have like a sense of creativity when it comes to doing things and they just spend the whole day on the phone. I hope I'm not being uh, offensive with any of you guys. But the thing is, like, you know, it's weird. In my opinion, it is weird. Now, um, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to start asking you, each of you, one of these questions. So I want to hear what is your opinion or what is your answer or your reply on, this, uh, on, the, on the topic. And the first one, I think, is going to go to Imelda. So Imelda, in your case. Um, isn't it weird to you how simple people are always on their cell phones? What do you think about that? Yeah, the people always have their cell phones. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Isn't it weird to you? Uh, no, actually, <laughs> nowadays is is uh is very a common, common practice yeah oh. but it it is not all okay but but it's, it's not weird it's not weird all right great nice that is a nice way to reply great 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 all right the second one does it seem doesn't it seem like kids spend too much time in front of the tv or the phone nowadays doesn't it seem like kids spend too much time in front of the tv now this question i think it's gonna go for luis so in your case luis doesn't it seem to you like kids spend too much time on in front of the tv or the phone nowadays uh, i think yes elaborate <laughs> you know I mean? elaborate like when i say elaborate it's like uh why why do you think yes okay so uh, i think we we spend a lot of time uh, watching watching the tv and the uh, watching the the cell phone so uh, that is a a really issue uh, about the last 10 years so the the communication but in 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 social network has been increased mm -hmm. more 
en more eh, eh, for all all the people that we are users. Okay. And Great. The, I think we we spend in the TV we we spend uh, more time when we, we we are a user for the cable so we can we can watch different uh, different uh, uh, channels and, and all that all right great good, good, great very good thank you very much how about the next one wouldn't it be great if everyone had a cell phone like that? Ahora, como les digo, ese tipo de cosas es como si estuviésemos teniendo una conversación con una persona que, o sea, estamos como recién conociendo y nosotros tal vez no sabemos qué decir, digamos. Son como los icebreakers, ¿sí? Y lo que estamos tratando de hacer simplemente es como tratar de obtener, ¿verdad? Un comentario, un feedback de esta persona, saber cuál es su opinión al respecto. Entonces tenemos ahora la siguiente, esta, ¿verdad? Wouldn't, wouldn't it be great if everyone had a cell phone like that? No, imagine, imagine that the cell phone like that that we're talking about is maybe a Samsung Flip or an iPhone 14, you know, something that it's like top of the line, one of those phones that are um, considered great by many. So um, what would you answer someone who asked you this? Eso sería como la idea, ¿verdad? Lo que no les había dicho. ¿Cómo le contestarían ustedes a alguien que les diga algo así en español, verdad? Como, hey, no sería genial que todos tuviéramos un teléfono de esos. Ahora, piensen ustedes, ¿qué le contestarían ustedes a alguien que les diga algo así? So, let's see. In your case, um, Lorena, what would you answer to someone if they, uh, if they ask you, wouldn't it be great if everyone had a cell phone like that? Maybe I would answer, no, for me, no. Because you just need your phone for communicate with somebody and and you don't need to have something too expensive. Imagine if you are on the bus or on a public transportation, you're going to maybe someone can take you, take, take your phone and it's going to be like something very expensive if you look that, no? If you lose that. And then I, I, I would say that, that I, I prefer a simple one and I can use it whatever I want, whenever I need, and I'm not going to be, I have a friend that have a, like a, a expensive, an expensive phone. And she said, I'm always have the, my phone turned off when I am on the bus or in places that I'm not, don't feel uh, right. secure, no? Uh -huh. Because if, imagine if someone, They uh, call me in a, in a, in when I or test me when I answer someone uh, take my phone. No, I'm not going to 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 be in that in that in that way. No, and then and then why the the, the use for the phone is not for to be in the in the bag. No, mm -hmm. it's to to have a conversation when you need. That's why. All right, great, very good. I love it. So, yeah, I mean, I will also say the same, you know, it's like um, people need to use the phone for the reason that they need it. So may maybe some people uh, might wish to have a better phone. Maybe there are people around, you know, that might want to have a better phone. But there are others. I will place myself as an example. I have one that is considered expensive. I, 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 and I am one of those people who doesn't make much from having an expensive phone. Because my sister, my girlfriend, actually my two sisters, they're always complaining about that. You know, that I have basically the best camera on my phone and I never take pictures. So I'm like, because I, I don't need pictures. I don't need, I want to remember the things that I live. I don't want to have, as uh, you know, my whole gallery packed with pictures. Um, and they're like, yeah, you have a, like a lot of memory on your phone. But I'm like, I prefer to have memories here than on the phone. Um, so it's, Something that in my case, I will not wish to have like a better phone. I'm okay with what I have. And it's like, yeah, I, I, I got it a while ago. It's kind of old already, but uh, I'm okay with it. You know, if I see someone with an iPhone 14 or more, it's like, it's okay. So I, I, I don't, I would not wish to have a better one because as you say, phones are for communication. Now, there are people who might want them for a specific activity 
that might require more capacity. And maybe then it's like, yeah, it's, it's your wish. But it's not like everyone should have one of those, you know. It would be very weird. But yeah. Okay, next one up. Shouldn't the government limit uh, the number of sites? Oh, wait, no, esa no. Esa la vamos a saltar. <laughs> so the next one. Um, I get an email on my cell phone. That's nice, isn't it? Oh, sorry. I think it's I got. Yeah, I got an email on my cell phone. That's nice, isn't it? Now, nowadays is something that will not necessarily consider nice. However, think about it in, as we said, like 15 years ago. Yeah, when phones were not that common, uh, what would you answer then? Think about that. If it was like a long time ago and it's like the first time you get an email on your phone or maybe think it's the first time you got a WhatsApp message on your phone. Um, how would you feel about that? How would you answer to someone who asks you something like this? Uh, the question is going to go this time, I think, to um, Claudia. So in your case, Claudia, how would you answer someone if it's the first time that this happens, okay? Uh, that someone tells you, I got an email on my cell phone. That's nice, isn't it? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Um, I think, um, I don't know, consider it appropriate if you, because if your cell phone is stolen, um uh, say, say? Uh, they they can access to information i don't know <laughs> okay yeah i mean it's it's your perspective so yeah if uh and that is also right because if your cell phone gets stolen and you don't have like a secure password to it um basically anyone can access your info so yeah it's something that you know it's, it will be very very dangerous um so yes it will also uh be something that is not as great so maybe you know someone may be excited about it but there are other people who might see the bigger picture who might see other details and consider that it's not like the best thing now how about this one TB makes kids lazy, doesn't it? TB makes kids lazy, doesn't it? Um, what do you think about it? How would you answer this question if you were, you know, having a conversation with someone, uh, maybe on the street, um, Gabriela? So, Gabi, Gabi Garcia. Well, uh, um, I don't have kids, but I may say that. TV makes daddies and mommies a little bit lazy because they are expecting that TV teaches uh, uh, their kids or they're expecting that the kids learns about what the TV shows them. So maybe it is not a problem of the kids. It's maybe the problem the of the... Yeah, how does that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is very true. And I have seen that since the very first time that I saw a smartphone, I remember it was uh, from one of my aunts who came from the U.S. I remember that the use that she gave it was to keep her um, her granddaughter watching videos. Like that was the use that she had, you know, for the phone. So, yeah, it's not the same thing, you know. It's like nowadays TV is not even relevant anymore. At least I, that's what I think, you know. Like watching TV is not as important as it used to be. It's more important that it has like a broadcast thing that you can, you know, um, share what you're looking at on your phone or your tablet on your TV than the TV itself. Uh, but it's like some of sort of the same thing. Uh, but yes, I, I do agree in some way that um, TV doesn't necessarily make kids lazy. It makes parents lazy. Because, I mean, it, it would be easier. Well, I say this coming from the same perspective as you. I don't have children yet. But I feel like if parents, you know, did like a better effort, instead of um, allowing their kids to watch like movies or, or like cartoons, 
they will rather, I don't know, like get a notebook or get a, get a drawing book and start drawing with the kids or maybe start doing numbers or start doing stuff. Um, that's my dream. Like whenever I have a kid, I wish that I have still the energies that I do today. And I wish that I will, you know, help him or her to learn as many things as possible instead of just throwing a phone or throwing a, a, a TV at his or her face. Because um, that also creates a barrier that afterwards is like very hard to overcome. Um, I, I was raised like that in some point because I remember that I was raised like that. I was basically gauged in my living room and I was like, okay, we'll watch a movie now. And I was like, okay. I, I mean, I was very young to say, okay, but I do remember it a little bit about how it was, you know, to be a kid that I, um, I was exposed a lot to the TV because they didn't want me to like get hurt or, or do things that kids do. Uh, but yeah, I, then grew up to desire to do things that kids do. Anyway, moving on. Uh, now, we can also say we use the phrase, don't you think, to um to form negative or tag questions. So, don't you think? Instead of something like doesn't it or shouldn't or wouldn't, we can simply say, don't you think? Uh, so, first example with this. Don't you think there are too many websites? And this question might go to, um, let's see, Leslie, in your case, Leslie, what would you answer someone who tells you, don't you think there are too many websites? Mm, I think uh, it's necessary or regular to many websites because uh, in the case um, of kids, they search some information and they are, um, how to say, tiene como la, la probabilidad de, de meterse en sitios que sean peligrosos para ellos sin saberlo, pues. Mm -hmm. So, this will be dangerous for them. Yeah, I totally agree. That, um, I mean, sometimes I think it will be better if we, like, had a way to, like, narrow down, you know, how much information is, like, out there on the internet because... Yeah, it's it's like um sometimes also it's also confusing. Like you have a website for this, a website for that, and uh, it's like hard to to get to the right information. And uh, the thing is that as the internet is a free space, basically everyone can create, um, or anyone and everyone can create a website that is reportedly um you know giving you news when maybe what they're doing is simply providing an idea, like a journal sort of thing. Um, so yeah, it's it's sometimes I think that it's hard for for whoever controls the internet to keep control of the information or what sort of information is um, you know, being passed around over the internet. But you know, it's it's something that it's basically impossible for us to control. Uh, but it would be great if it was like minimized or um better better what like better record it if it was possible but yeah okay now um with this one i will have to switch it up a little bit because it simply says it's actually dangerous don't you think now we i think we are going to say something like um riding the bus is actually dangerous don't you think so the question is going to go to carla so riding the bus is actually dangerous don't you think Uh, yes, teacher. Yes, it is. <laughs> que intro. <laughs> uh -huh. Why? Why do you think it's dangerous to ride the bus? Uh, I mean, it's dangerous because uh, buses are not in a good uh, way. And this is the, for the most important, I mean. But uh, then there are uh, people or bad people that can stall your things um, with uh, violence mm -hmm. or without it. Without it. And I don't know what more. Oh, and depend on, uh, your time depends about the bus uh, because um, the, there are many. Eh, no sé, paradas, ¿cómo le puedo decir? O oh, güey, 
Oh, okay. There are many tops and and you have to to wait to other people take the bus stop too. And I don't know. Maybe the only one thing about use the bus is that it's cheaper. I don't yeah. know. Cheaper and better for the environment, in my opinion. Yeah. So yeah. I mean <laughs> in in the case that the buses have a uh, nice exhaust, you know, but here like with the flares of, of fumes and stuff that the bosses leave behind it's not healthy at all but yeah in you know in the case that uh, we use transportation that is like relatively new or at least the exhausts are new cuando hablo de exhaust hablo de lo del escape okay por en caso que no que no sepan exhaust sí. se refiere a eso verdad o sea en nuestro caso pues sí verdad no serían tan tan saludable porque las bolitas de humo que dejan a veces los buses son peores quizás que, que 40 carros que vayan pasando por ahí. Pero, yeah, I mean, if it's like, you know, a better designed or a well designed um, transportation system or public transportation system, it will be better for the environment. But yeah, great. Okay, so now um, I think that, yeah, we're going to get at least, at least five examples. So think about that. Think about what sentence can you guys say and then turn it into a negative or tap question. So think about it now. Think about what example can you place? And I think we are going to start by hearing from, let me see. I feel like maybe Luis can have an example for us. What do you think, Luis? Excuse me, teacher. I yes. didn't hear the, oh. the question. Can you can you please provide us an example of a tag question or like a sentence you could use and then you can turn into a negative um, question or tag question? Uh, okay. Uh, 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 uh-huh. Uh, can you give me an example? I was about to do that. So you can say something like, um, life is expensive nowadays. Then you can place a comma there and you introduce the tag, which is something like this. Life is expensive nowadays, isn't it? Ese podría ser un ejemplo. Si la vida es cara esos días o no. So life is expensive nowadays, isn't it? Or if it was a negative, uh, you can say something like, don't you think life is getting too expensive? So things like these are the ones that you can say. So life is expensive nowadays, isn't it? Or don't you think life is getting too expensive? Now, what would okay. be an example that you can provide? Uh... According according to the news by today, mm -hmm. that that is my my question. Okay, according to the news by today, mm -hmm. the the beans are too expensive. Mm -hmm. Eh, coma hmm? o marco eh, coma eh, eh, aren't hmm. aren't 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 them aren't them okay uh -huh. there we go according to the news by today the beans are too expensive aren't them Great. So now here you get, you know, uh, an answer from the other person. Like you're telling him or her what you heard on the news and then you ask them, you know, like, um, what do you think? Basically, that's what you do. When you add a tag question, basically, that's what you're doing. Asking the person, what do you think? Um, so, yeah, according to the news by today, the beans are too expensive. Out of them. Great. Um, how about we hear from... Um, Sandra, can we get an example from you? 
Uh, don't you think today is more tourist place? Okay, don't you think today, sorry? Exist oh. more tourist places. Uh huh. I have an example. Okay, shoot it. Okay. Uh, in the case of gasoline price out for the road, isn't it? The gasoline, of... <laughs> gasoline <laughs> price out through the road, isn't it? Oh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> started rapping. <laughs> Sorry. Started gasoline rap. price. Yeah, out prices through are the... through the roof. Uh huh. Es de, o sea, el precio de la gasolina está por las nubes, ¿no crees? Uh -huh. hoy, hoy valen casi cinco pesos. Uh -huh. Hoy temprano pasé a echarle cinco dólares al carro, el carro de trabajo, en un pickup y andaba ya con el, con el piloto encendido y estábamos en un cantón. Pero yo dije, aunque sea para salir, pero no se movió nada la aguja. Yo como, tú, ya nos quedamos allá adentro. Pero no, llegamos a la casa. Pero ya. ¿Cómo, cómo? Solo el sumito. Sí, yo les juro que, miren, y lo peor es que eh, estábamos trabajando en la gasolinera. Hace dos, tres días estuvimos trabajando en esa gas. Y de hecho, el hombre que me atendió es el que nos consiguió ese trabajo de la gas. Ah, pues, y me preguntó, ¿de dónde están ahorita? Me dijo, pues, ¿cómo él sabe que no estábamos trabajando ahí, verdad? Y le conté más o menos. Ah, pues, y le dije, solo ese mes cinco pesos, le dije, solo para salir de allá más tarde. Ah, pues, y cuando veo que, o sea, cuando encendí el carro de nuevo, me quedé como, ¡Mmm! Dios, no subió nada, dije, o sea, vi que solo era un galón, como con dos, no sé qué. Ah, pues, yo como, diablo, ya no salimos. Pero igual, o sea, tampoco era tan, tan lejos, era quizás como unos 10, 15 minutos, pero igual, o sea, está súper caro. Y <ríe> mi problema principal es que el carro, el carro como, digamos, que más manejo es un V6 y yo como, <ríe> ya no quiero salir, pero sí. It's very expensive. So yeah, gasoline prices are through the roof. No, eh, y ahora ser, los de la gas se pone pesado con uno cuando ve que va a echar cinco pesos le hacen el gran, la gran cara así como que, ah, uh -huh. <ríe> solo eso va a echar. En ese caso yo suerte tuve porque pues sí, el, el señor era como amigo, pero es cierto, yo ya, ya he vivido esos momentos. A veces, bueno, personalmente yo he hecho uh, así cinco pesos más que todo cuando ando como carros que no son míos o sea, ando en la moto, en la moto normal. Pero este, en, en carros que no son míos, digamos que me lo prestan un ratito, ¿verdad? Hago un mandado y así. Ah, pues, pero sí. De hecho, al otro día le eché 10 dólares a un carro de un amigo que me había prestado. Y lo mismo. O sea, el, el chero de la gafa como que, mmm, pinche pobre. Y yo como... Uh, excuse me. Sí, yo, amigo, pasé temprano echándole 40 a otro carro. O sea, no manches, que era el carro, ajá, el mío. O, digo, de la casa. Pero fue como que, dude, it's very expensive. It's very, very expensive. Pero sí, ese día... ¡Ah! Parece que me acuerdo, voy a aprovechar a darles el comercial de una vez. Que he hecho ese día, este, que le eché esos 10 dólares a ese carro mientras estaba en eso, ¿verdad? Se acercó un señor. Aquí en esta gasolinera, aquí en el tránsito, andan bastante ahorita gente que, que dice que... Oh, que vino un barco de no sé qué, no sé dónde, con estos relojes. Ah, pues, y yo les juro que a mí me dio risa cuando el señor... O sea, por el carro que yo andaba, supongo que fue caso mío. Ah, pues, y dijo, este es para su categoría, y yo... ¿Qué? Pero hay unos relojes súper feos que a mí no me gustan, de unos que son como um, dorados, no sé, pero que, o sea, se nota que pues sí va. O sea, me gustan los relojes, pero me gustan los relojes como de cuero y así. Ah, pues ya se, el señor yo me quedé como, y mi novia solo se me quedó viendo porque ya sabe cómo soy. Solo se me quedó viendo como, no, oíste lo que te dijo, tu categoría. Pero ajá, fue traumatizante. Pero bueno, things that happen, things that happen. All right. Side um, I, criminal offensive side I Lorena. Yes, 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 yes. That was exactly it. I was about to ask you, Lorena, but these are great, great examples. I was, I was about, I was coming. You to are me. talking, but I'm, I'm on Friday. Yeah. I saw, I saw you were like concentrated. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay. Is she grading something? No, okay, I like to no. write everything. Isn't it wonderful when you can travel to every place inside a country? Yes, it is. It is wonderful. That's some, one of the best things that, you know, we can do. Um. So, yeah. Then we have, uh, let's see, the next example. Rainy days, let people rest a little, uh, a little bit more. At night. Aquí, <laughs> okay. Aquí podría ser mejor que digamos. Ahorita le voy a ayudar para que nos suene mejor. 
Sería rainy days, let people rest a little. Let's see. A little bit more. At night, you said, right? Yeah, because if you are working, you can't uh -huh. rest. <laughs> so, uh, aquí podría ser mejor que digamos, don't take. Sí. Okay. Don't, don't take. Eso sería casi como el decir, el, el típico de español. O no. Sí, en español es más fácil hacer estas tag questions porque lo que hacemos es simplemente decir así, ¿verdad? O sea, como los días lluviosos nos dejan descansar un poco más en la noche, o no. O podríamos decir, o qué crees vos. Sí, en cambio en inglés tenemos que tener cuidado a cuál es el sujeto, porque acá el sujeto es The, rainy, yeah, ajá, rainy days. Rainy okay. days, entonces yeah. es plural, ¿verdad? Entonces yeah, sería, yeah. don't take. That's just true. Ajá, podría Because ser... When you... When you were in the, sorry, an example, mm -hmm. TV, TV, algo, something, the, the last examples, I was looking, what was the subject, TV or the kids? In the, in the, before, TV makes kids uh -huh. lazy? Lazy, doesn't it? TV is TV. Uh, it is TV, yeah. Yeah, TV is the, um, is the, 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 the subject, and yes, kids yeah. are basically the object, because kids yeah. are the ones that are getting, you know, lazy, mm -hmm. so yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. In this case, rainy days, uh, let people rest a little bit more at night. You can say, um, no, no, you cannot say R and them. The problem is that we don't have any B verbs over here. Mm -hmm. If there was a B verb, maybe you could say R and them. Um, mm -hmm. Because here, for example, with the, with the example that Luis gave us, beans are too expensive. So here, what we're talking about is the beans. So beans are too expensive. So these are allows us to say aren't them. Um, and yeah, that's the only tag that we have. Oh yeah, oh here, for example, the one that I gave, life is too expensive. So it, there is an is here though. So therefore you can say, isn't it? But as always, when there is any other verb and it's not a verb B, um, you can always go with don't, okay? Or, don't. you know, do okay. or whichever form of do that you have. When it comes um, to the case that you're using a um, a modal, modal verb, you should use the modal. Like for example, if you said, um, uh, I love that, sorry. I love that we can camp here. I love that we can camp here. Can't we? Yeah, so something mm -hmm. like that. You're, you're, you're yeah. using can. Uh -huh. I love that you can can here. Can't we? Yeah. So I use can. So we say can't we? Because that was the motor verb that I was using. Now, let's see the next one. Uh, wouldn't it be excellent to have a good relationship with your neighbors? Yeah, that would be excellent. Do you have a good relationship with your neighbors? Yes. Of course. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Great. So this is coming. Or I mean, this, this comes mostly for people who do not have a good relationship with the neighbors. Yeah. I don't even have neighbors. That's how bad of a neighbor I am. <laughs> you live alone. Yeah, I do, in an I, island. I do. I. I mean, my house is sort of isolated. You know, because it's it's weird. The location of my house is very weird because right in front of me is what they call. Colonia La Pradera, and normally my address is Colonia La Pradera, but our property is not in Colonia La Pradera. And right in front of my house, my dad owns, you know, the property in front of my house. To the left, there is an abandoned site. To the right, there is an abandoned site. And to the back of my house, there is, well, a huge patio. And then there is a plantation, a corn plantation. So no neighbors. There is basically no neighbors around. The closest neighbor, yo siempre digo que si en algún caso alguien aquí en la casa tuviese un accidente y empieza a gritar a los vecinos, o sea, nadie lo va a escuchar porque los vecinos a la derecha, a la izquierda, perdón, están como a 60 metros. A la derecha, lo mismo. Al norte, 30, 35 metros, pero son dos viejitos. Así que estamos mal. Y al sur, como cinco manzanas. I think it's like it's basically impossible, you know. I I basically have no neighbors, so yeah, it's it's weird, but I love it, you know. It's 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 nice to like live a little bit isolated sometimes, but um, it's nice. <laughs> yeah, it is nice. Like for example, um, so that's something that we love with my uh my two sisters because we can do whatever caballada we want, and like you know, people are not gonna hear. 
Um, when family <laughs> comes to visit, my family is very loud. Um, I have one aunt who, when she laughs, it's like a very, very loud laughter. Um, so yeah, it's it's you know great to to like have all this space. Um, and as I said before, we have a lot of trees. So whenever we feel like it, you know, we just go down to the patio and we hung a hammock for each. And it's like, you know, no one is bothering us because no one can look at us. So yeah, it's 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 great about it's something great about living here where I live. But now, uh, to wrap it up, just to take a glimpse at what we were going to be covering tomorrow, I have reduced classes. Now, in this case, it's not reduced time classes, it's reduced relative classes. What are relative classes? Well, sorry, relative classes are these words over here. What they do is basically just a state a relation between the subject and the activity. Basically, that's what they do. You know, it's basically just establish a bridge. It's a tiny bridge an unnecessary bridge, but that some people consider to be useful. So relative classes are simply that. They establish a relationship between the subject and the activity. However, there are many cases when it's better to go ahead and take away the relative class and simply say the sentence without using either of them. Because here, for example, we have someone able to think quickly might be a good surgeon. So in some cases, if you say someone who is able to think quickly might be a good surgeon, when then can we use this who? Well, it can be used when, for example, you're trying to explain this to people who are trying to decide where they are going to study or what degree they're going to go for. So in those cases, it's better if you say something like this someone who um who is sorry someone who is able to think quickly might be a good surgeon because you're basically in um printing the idea that they need to be able to think quickly if they want to be surgeons but if it's simply an explanation like an outer explanation or a presentation um about abilities that a person needs to develop certain job, it's better if you simply say someone able to think quickly might be a good surgeon. It's simply a comment. There is no need to establish this um, like close relationship between the person and the action. That relationship is needed only when, well, you want to be very specific and very clear about the existence of that relationship. Like you need that relationship for this to work. So it's, you know, it's it's a bit of a, an easy thing or an easy way of seeing it. So you don't necessarily need it for a presentation, but you do need it to an ex for an explanation when you want to make clear that this is like a requirement or um, when you're giving these people like a list of things that they have to do or they need to have, well, then you need the relative classes. Now, um, well, the explanation that we have or the definition that we have is that you can shorten a relative class by dropping the relative pronoun and the verb be. So those are the two things that you do. Uh, the second example, a person, we can take that is this time. A person that is looking for adventure could be a private detective. So a person that is looking for adventure could be a private detective. If you simply want to explain it to a general public, you can simply say a person looking for adventure could be a private detective. So there you have it. Relative classes, what they do is simply establish a close relationship between the subject and the action itself. There is no need for them in regular conversations or in regular presentations. However, they come as necessary aspects of an explanation when you're trying to provide people um, like very specific or exact details about something or an activity they need to perform. But well, um, for now, basically that's it. It's already nine. So I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your night and, you know, you can rest well. So we can meet here tomorrow again. So bye-bye for now. Thank you very much for your attention and participation in this class. Hope I'll see you tomorrow again and bye-bye.
拜拜。